Hello guys, the Fantastic V here with another episode of Roblox Analyzation. Today I will be analyzing Fleet of Facility. I will be analyzing impression, gameplay, design, theme, and uniqueness, and then I will give my points on them. So without further ado, let the analyzation begin! So one of the first things was the impression I got from the lobby itself. I mostly got a classic game vibe on Roblox or something. One of those classic games, one of those classic lobby feels, if you know what I'm saying. Plus you've sort of got this peaceful setting going on with the music and all. There's not really much to the impressions of this game really when you first join, but it is done pretty effectively I'd say. But once you enter around, that whole vibe changes, and the setting is a bit different now. So if you're a survivor, you have to run away from the beast. But if you are the beast, you have to prevent them from escaping, and capture them. So anyways, the impressions for this game are done pretty well. There's not much to say about the impressions, but it is done pretty effectively. The transition from the peaceful lobby into the enclosed facility is pretty good since it's just a fade in, fade out rather than just instantly teleporting. And plus, depending on which role you get, you get a tiny guide on what to do. But in general, it is very simple to know what to do. If you're a survivor, it does say to hack all the computers. And if you go near a computer, it says to press E. Or if you're on mobile, you press that E button instead. And being the beast is pretty simple too because you just click or tap to swing your hammer. And since there's only one class to runner, you just press Q to use your running skill. So the impressions are pretty simple but effective, and now I will be giving my points on them. So now we will be analyzing the gameplay. So first I will be going over the survivor class. A survivor's job is to hack all five computers and then proceed to escape from these facilities. But you also have to make sure you avoid the beast along the way. If you are a survivor, you can hide in lockers to hide from the beast. Plus, while you're hacking a computer, you gotta make sure you do not fail that safety check. Or else something like this will happen. Also, if the beast is near you, you'll see light and hear sound. Also, if you do manage to get captured, another survivor could save you, or you could save a captured survivor. Also, both teams can open and close doors. But survivors can only go under vents, and beasts can't. And they can both jump through windows, although when a beast jumps, they slow down for a temporary amount of time. Now, when you are the beast, there is currently only one class you can select so far. The beast can find out where you are through failed hacking, footsteps, and typing. And then once the beast is close enough to a survivor, they can capture the survivor. The beast can also run faster than survivors. And with the runner class, they can run even faster for a temporary amount of time. And after a certain amount of time, captured players are unfreeable once they are frozen. The beast can also win by making sure the survivors don't escape within the time limit. The beast wins based on how many people he captured, so you don't really lose if you don't capture everyone. So, everything in this game is pretty well balanced. The survivors and the beast are balanced in terms of ability, because there's a lot of different ways survivors can escape, and there's a lot of different ways a beast could capture survivors. So the gameplay is definitely very well executed. So I get four points on the gameplay balances, and another two points for the cooperative ways you can escape from the beast. So now I will put the points on the scoreboard, and then we will get into design. First, I will be going over the lobby. The design of the lobby is simplistic, but it isn't bland and all boring. Plus, there's also a tiny voting system where you can vote on two maps at a time, rather than all three maps at a time like you used to be able to. And, while you're waiting for the round to end, or waiting for intermission, you can go into some tiny parts of the lobby. 
also, I like how each map has a certain theme, and I also like how each map has a distinct look. This one is just a regular facility, this one's theme is an abandoned prison, and this one is an abandoned facility. I also like the tiny indicators that it shows, like the red one which indicates where someone's at if they failed a computer, so that way a survivor can find that computer and help them out, or a beast could find that computer. And the other indicator where you can see where an exit is at after you've hacked all the computers. I also like the indicator where you can see where the pod's at, the freeze pods, because it makes sense that the beast should know where these are. Because, I mean, this beast probably has been in the facility for a really long time. I also like the indicator that shows for when someone is captured, so that way it isn't too hard for survivors to find captured survivors. And whenever that indicator goes away, the beast knows that they have been freed. I also like the different looks of the computers in each map, and the pods in each map. I also like how the top bar works. You can see the health of other survivors, and then if one of the survivors' health is lower than another one who's captured, you could save the lower one instead, and then the other one. Or, if you are the beast, you could pay more attention to that character instead. I also like how each gem makes a different color, and how there's different designs for both gemstones and hammers. Another thing I like is this trading post which is another way to trade for items that you want. So, there is a lot of design features in Fleet of Facility. The maps are different and have distinct looks. You can even make your own map if you want. And I like how the bar and indicators work. It works really well with the design. And I like the variety of gemstones and hammer textures that you can use, too. Plus the trading post, where you can trade items that you don't want for items you do want. And this game is also compatible on multiple platforms, and it even works great on weak devices. So the design is pretty well done, I'd say. So I'll be given my points, and then I will go to the next topic, theme. Now, this game sort of has a mixture of themes. So in this game, you have a hide-and-seek theme with it. It also has the freeze tag theme. And yes, I mean that quite literally. But the theme also goes around a facility. Question is, what's the story? Was there a person who brought like a giant hammer? And then was like, crazy? And then they close, shut it down. And then the other people in that facility? <laughs> were like trapped there and they had to escape? Huh, now I wonder if they will ever make a story mode to it. <laughs> That'd be actually pretty cool actually. But I don't want to get too off topic here, so I'll be giving my points for the theme I guess, since there's not really much to talk about on theme anyways. So, I'd say this game is pretty unique. There's definitely a lot of gameplay aspects that make this game unique. And the gameplay is sort of like a mixture of other gameplays. Like I said in theme, you've got hide and seek and freeze tag. And I haven't seen any other games that have to do with a facility, other than Detox, which is sort of like a fan game of Fleet of Facility, I guess you could say? If you've seen that game before. But other than that, this definitely is quite a unique game, and I do play it from time to time. So I guess I'll give my points on uniqueness. Well, anyways, that's about it for the entire video. If you enjoyed this analyzation, consider liking and maybe even subscribing if you'd like to see more. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day or night depending on which side of the earth you live. And bye.